Do you know what this is? Because I'll tell you what this is. This is one of the primary ecological and economical disasters of our age. Because this was breakfast at my hotel this morning when the last guest had left. All of this is now in the waste bin in the back of that particular hotel. In fact, this is also in the waste bin. This is us putting stuff on our plates, that stuff we think we can finish, but we didn't. I can easily say that 25% of what was prepared for us today is now in that waste bin. And this is not the first time they served us lunch, uh, breakfast, sorry. This is not the first time we had breakfast, because then you'd say, you know, we learned from this, we'll do better tomorrow. Indeed a disaster, and unfantably to me, but luckily I'm here to tell you there's solutions. Because I can tell you how tech will save food. But let me first tell you why food needs saving. Because agriculture is thought to have a bigger effect on the planet than the Ice Age once had. It might have actually prevented the Earth of shooting into the next Ice Age. We've never experienced that one. Seems good, right? But now we're shooting out the other end and warming up the Earth irreversibly. So with consumption being one of our primary effectors, why then do we treat food this way? And to emphasize my point, I will be needing you as our audience today. Can I have some lights in the room, please? Because I'd li like to ask you, the, the lady in the striped shirt, can you stand up, please? And everyone to the back and to the right of her, can you all stand up, please, here in the room? Don't worry, it's not going to be bad. <laughs> so have a look around. Everyone's sitting down and everyone's standing up. This is the amount of food that we throw away. One third out of everything that we produce we throw away. So all of you, you've been produced, but sorry, we don't need you. <laughs> you can leave. <laughs> no, please don't. But sir, the, the, there's, there's a lot of, you can sit down again, please stay. But this, was, this is what we're doing to food. And why? Because I, I, I will not linger on the problem too much, but for sure I'll tell you that wasting is no good at all. And in particular food, as we're in fact wasting the seeds, the water, the land, the energy, the fertilizer or manure and our labor, all of that accumulating into an amazing amount of money. $1.3 trillion to be more or less precise, euros as we're in Europe. One point, it's, it's an unfantable amount of money, right? It's five times what Apple made last year. And it's ironic, right, Apple? Um, it's more than twice the GDP of my country. It's more than we make on fresh produce, globally. So it's a waste, but let's talk solutions. That's what I promised you guys. And I'm sure it's, it's there on a the micro level. I'm sure that some of you here have used the surplus of apples to produce an apfelstrudel or a pie. And that's not going to waste, is it? <laughs> They'll be finished. But consider, would you use the other products that you need for an apple studio if they were past the expiry date? And that's one of the troubles. We, we think this expiry date is holy. So when did we stop using our senses to check if our products are still okay to use? So please, at least start doing that. Start taking your senses for real and use food that's working on a micro level, but seriously a big deal. But I'm here to tell you about some more industrial solutions. And Project Drawdown, I'd highly invite you to look into this project because it's an excellent summary of only 100 projects that we as a society need to implement to stop climate change in its tracks. This is them. And I'm not going to go through all of them. There's uh, 
some of the dead giveaways, wind turbines, solar panels, and so forth. But there's a couple of fascinating ones, such as educating girls in third world countries to help them educate, educate them on, on family planning to make sure that we stop overpopulation. But also the tropical staple tree, very straightforward solution. This is a particular sort of foil, foliage that draws a lot of CO2 out of the air. This is tangible solutions, I would say. And reducing food waste is one of the major, major things we can do. And indeed, tech will do so. And I'll tell you why. At the World Economic Forum recently, it's been posed that we're now in the fourth industrial revolution. Disruptive te technologies such as robotics, such as genetic editing, mobile supercomputing, artificial intelligence, or IoT, Internet of Things, are now changing the ways we can approach problems, totally changing it around. We can now monitor and modulate the environment in ways that we've never been able before. Looking at this chip, I've got it right here. This chip's four centimeters big, it's three euros, yet it contains multiple times the amount of the computing power that computers had only 30 years ago. If you combine that sort of computing with artificial intelligence, there's absolutely no limit to what you can do. Let's start small. Want to measure the moist level in your plants so they won't ever die on you again. You can do it. Want to have an automated signal when your cat's litter box is full before it starts smelling. Do it, easy. Want to have insights on the air quality in all the rooms of your house. This is now affordable and available to everyone here. Looking at a in more industrial scale, robotic farming using drones and automated machines, solving many of the strenuous labor issues that we have with uh, agriculture. But also, we've just heard some of this this morning, satellites are now no longer the size of trucks, but the size of microwaves. And with that way, we can connect the whole world, and most of it is not connected to proper internet right now, disclosing so much information to those people that have never been able to, to properly engage in the current world economy. It's brilliant. And this is exactly what me and my companions in my startup, Zero Food Waste, are using this power, we harness it, to solve real-world problems such as food waste. And we do so for the hospitality industry at first, and we'll do more later. So we take your waste bin in your restaurant, and we outfit it with a weighing scale and a camera monitoring unit. And in this camera, there's an artificial intelligence algorithm that recognizes ingredients from the images. And this way, you can, without effort, track everything that goes into the waste bin all day, fully automatically. And waste in a restaurant is a big pile of really, really small pieces. What we've just seen, it's a lot of small pieces, a lot of small transactions that would be impossible to register until now. And if we get this information in a tangible way to a dashboard where you can see how this waste relates to the number of guests you were expecting, then you can seriously drive it down. If we would have installed this at breakfast today, at my hotel, then we would be able to do better tomorrow, for sure. We're looking into where do you lose the waste? Is it in uh, overstocking? Did we prepare too much? Were the portions too big? There's all sorts of approaches, but now you know, so you can act. For a restaurant that serves 100 covers daily, your yearly savings, if you save only 50%, will be 5,000 kilos of food worth 15,000 euros. I'm not sure what chef wouldn't sign off on that, but more importantly, 10 tons of CO2 were used to produce the food that was wasted, and seven million liters of water. That's one person showering daily for 285 years. Imagine if we can do this in only one restaurant. What we can do if we do that globally? And that's the mission, but still, it says 50%, and I feel we're not there yet. And we aren't. We will never be able to 
diminish it by 100% with my solution alone, because then people would go hungry if you go absolutely zero, and we shouldn't eat all of it, because then next year there will be talks on obesity. The only way I feel we can properly tackle this problem is by working together. Because only by working together we can provide the integral solution. So in my case, as problem uh, solvers, we should work together for the res this restaurant owner. So I'm trying to work with companies that facilitate the plant protein transition, but also waste disposal companies to make sure that we cover the whole thing holistically and really make it easy for a restaurant entrepreneur to solve his problem. One thing I'm particularly proud of is our collaboration, starting collaboration with Too Good To Go, an app that's not yet here in Austria, but I highly recommend you to look into it. This company makes sure that everything that's uneaten in a buffet like this morning will still go to people in the neighborhood for a small price so that it will all be eaten. So I save 50% of the food with my solution and they take care of the rest. And only by approaching problems this way, we can actually do, a, do something real. Because that's the biggest fear I have. It's the apathy of the seemingly insurmountable size of this problem. This problem is so big that it paralyzes people to act because there's so many things you can do. And only if we as solution providers work together, we can make sure that something will be happening. So I invite you to, to join my way of thinking and to think how this could work for your industry. How do people, solution providers, need to work together in order to solve the problems? And also in your personal life, now that you know about breakfast, what will you do for dinner? It's so easy. So let's work together, shall we? Because why on earth wouldn't we? Bon appétit. <laughs>